Step number four. This might be five. Either way. A longer pause on that one. Should not have done that. Good news is, is that was set number five, so we got one more coming up and then we'll be moving on. Thank goodness. Chesticles are feeling good. Got a good, good workout today. Getting through. Our main, main exercise today is bench press. We're gonna do a little bit, a couple squats here shortly after this. Uh, we did squats heavier on Wednesday. Today is more uh, just making sure everything is dialed in and feeling good. Then we'll get into the rest of our full body workout. We got overhead press, lat pull downs, some other things I don't remember. <laughs> Tune in and find out. for another like 20 30 seconds here and then we got one more set on our bench press we are doing six sets of three at 85 percent of our one rep max so i got about 235 pounds on the bar doing uh, sets of three uh, not super high volume today going a little bit heavier on the weight making sure it's controlled it's moving well uh, then after this we're going to switch up and do some squats give the upper body a little bit of a break and hit the lower body today uh, just like five sets of squats nothing too crazy five by five lighter weight. Uh, today is more of a technique day for the squats. Our main movement here is our bench press today, so that's why we're going a bit heavier. And then we've got our accessory work after that. If you see me futzing with my ear, I've been dealing with a sinus infection all week, and my right ear, like I can't hear anything out of it. It's like it needs to pop, like it's on an airplane, and I just I can't hear anything out of it. So it's really it's been messing with me all week. Anyway, that's not important. What's important is lifting, lifting heavy weights, and having a good time. Now that we got our squat, uh, bench press out of the way, we're gonna hit a uh, handful of sets of squats here, like I mentioned. My squat day is usually Wednesday, so we did heavy squats on Wednesday. Today is gonna be more of a lighter weight, just kind of moving the body, making sure everything still feels good. Yeah. 
So we're gonna do five sets of five today on our squats. About 65 to 70% of our one rep max, which is around 245 pounds. Nothing too crazy, nothing too ridiculous. Just to get the legs firing on our off days. Just doing a nice little five by five on our squats. Again, Wednesday is our heavy squat day. Today is more of a foundational technique. Just to make sure everything is firing well. Just to move the legs. I usually do each of my compound movements. My squats, my bench press, and my deadlifts twice a week. One day is a heavy day. One day is a foundational day. heavy for not being our heavy day. We'll see if we make it through five sets of those. We might just do three. I do three or four. Five's a lot. Don't, I, don't know why I sat down. I need to go to the restroom. I'll be right back. Friday, Friday. Oh goodness. Legs are definitely feeling tired today. It's almost like I just did squats two days ago. 
because I did. But we never skip leg day. So we're gonna do them. Get into our second set, five by five on our squats. sometimes. Weights that moved your last session move a little bit slower today. Weights might move a little bit quicker some other day. I'm a little underslept, a little under the weather. It's dark and cloudy outside. Might be under, a little underfed, underfueled. So weights are feeling a little bit heavy today, but that's okay. What is up, Matt? Yo, how you doing today? Today, tonight, whatever time it is over there in uh, Denmark. Welcome in, brother. Whew. Oh my gosh. I'm out of breath. Those got me. I haven't really been able to breathe out of my nose all week. So, so all the breathing's through my mouth. So it always feels like I'm a lot more out of breath than I am. 9 p.m., nice. Getting ready for Friday evening shenanigans. Get into the weekend. Hopefully not getting into any trouble. Nothing, nothing too felonious. General antics and shenanigans are okay. General antics. Oh. Welcome in everybody, happy Friday. Or Saturday, wherever you are. Welcome in. We're doing some squats right now. We hit some bench press a little bit earlier. We're gonna got we got a full body workout following up after this. Just taking a little rest break in between sets number two and three of five on our squats. Heavy lifting. Got a week's vacation now. Oh, about to get on all the trouble. About to have all the fun. Can't go wrong with vacation. All right, let's do this thing. Ugh. It's gonna suck if we do it. It's gonna suck when we do it, so we might as well do it. Get it over with. Ugh. It doesn't usually suck this much, but I did squats on Wednesday, and we did uh, heavier weight. Today is a little bit more foundational work, but it's still heavy. next two sets are done. Good grief. For those that are new or if you've been following along, you know, my, my current workout plan, you know, I'm a personal trainer here. I'm inviting you guys into what I do. My personal plan is I am powerlifting. So I am lifting three days, oh, excuse me, three days a week, generally Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And my focus is I'll double up two of the main powerlifting movements, squats, bench, deadlifts. Uh, I'll, I'll combine two of them each day. First one is usually like the main focus. That's when we lift heavy, we progress each week. And the second one is a little more foundational, back off the weights, make sure everything feels good. So my current split right now, 
Monday is deadlifts and bench press. Wednesday is squats and deadlifts. Friday is bench and squats. So I did heavy squats on Wednesday and this bar is just feeling like a thousand pounds today. It's all part of it though. We are getting stronger. We are seeing the numbers go up. We are getting what our, our main goal is, is, is increasing the weight each week. Got three pull-ups today. Hell yeah. That's what we're talking about. I think it was back in like August or September when we first started chatting. When I first jumped on here, you're one of the, one of the OGs, my man. Uh, that was one of the things you wanted to get was push-ups and pull-ups. That's what we love to hear. Fist bump. That's rock star status right there. Hope you jumped off the pull-up bar and went, built different. Flex on them. Establish your dominance. No, that's awesome, man. Congratulations, bravo. Since you did your pull-ups, do you want to come finish my squats for me? I got two more sets. You got this, right? You can, you can just come over and finish these out for me. I am cruising through these. I want to get done with my squats today. How much? We got 245 pounds on here. You can do that, right? A lot of people at the gym. Oh yeah, if there were a lot of people at the gym, you definitely had to hop off the pull-up bar and just go, build different, let's go. Establish your dominance. And if you didn't, just do that next time. details. All right, fine. I'll do my workout myself. But I appreciate that you even entertained the idea of doing it for me. One forty five squat. Hell yeah. That's nothing to slouch about. I just started a, uh, I just started working with one of my guys in person. He's 39 years old. Uh, he's a rock climber, goes like hiking and uh, uh, yeah, I have a Discord, it should be that Moobot. Uh, I've had it, uh, probably since August or September, maybe October. Um, I'm trying, trying to get a bigger community there. So please feel free to join, hang out, share uh, your PRs as you, as you get them. Uh, but I was working with one of my clients yesterday and he was doing uh, squats and he had 100 pounds. Uh, 100 pounds on, the, you know, on the, uh, the bar plus the weight. And uh, he was pretty stoked about it. Like uh, he's 39. He's been in the gym before, but his goals before many years ago were fat loss. He lost a bunch of weight, got in shape, did like a lot of like high intensity interval training. So mostly like fast paced work, body weight work, dumbbell work, stuff that keeps the, keeps the energy high, keeps the, the heart rate high. And now he's switching into wanting to build a little bit of muscle, build his strength. Again, he's into rock climbing. So especially the upper body. Uh, so like pull-ups, something that he and I are working on. But we did squats yesterday with hundred pounds. And he was pretty stoked about that. It was the first time he had done that. Um, so always love, always love those moments when you hit like 100, 135, 225. There's always little markers that, even if that's not your goal, 
to get stronger, to hit those numbers. It is kind of fun to the ego to like hit one of those and be like, huh, I did that. Cool. Even if it's just for a brief moment. And considering you and I have been talking, you know, on and off through here, through chat for the last like handful of months, five, four or five months, six months maybe, uh, I know a big, uh, big thing you were working on was just being able to get push-ups. And now you're getting push-ups, now you're getting pull-ups. That squat, you keep with it, that squat will skyrocket. You'll hit 225 plus in no time. What is up? B Madeline. Hi. Welcome in. All right, let's knock out these last minute squats. I'm done with these guys, so let's finish them up. Only throw them in here, because we gotta, we gotta work our lower body a little bit. But I am done with these, so let's finish it up strong. We don't, we don't skip it just because we don't want to do it. We just finish it a little bit quicker. Done with squats. Woo. Can I do 225 bench? Yes, I can. We actually, you just missed it. That's what we started off with today. We did uh, six sets of three. Six sets of three reps for our bench press to start off our workout. And I was doing uh, 235 pounds for my sets. And we have a lovely guest that's just about to walk in. My lovely wife, Jess, is coming in. Hello, my lovely wife, Jess. Hello, my lovely husband, Eric. Uh, my lovely wife, Jess, just came in. She's gonna get her workout in this evening after a, a lovely day at work. Now she's going to work out. Uh, I think she's also bench pressing. She's doing a similar workout. Cool. Uh, <laughs> but I see now. Thank you. Oh, uh, you're strong as a as F. Strong NGL. As F. Strong as F. NGL. Thank you. Not quite as strong as I'd like to be, but fuck we're getting there. This place clean. We're gonna fuck this place clean. I appreciate that. Uh, B Madeline. B Madeline. Uh, yeah, that's my, that's my goal. Welcome to, you know, this is, uh, this is my gym. This is, you know, welcoming you into what I, I do, what I, my workouts are. So the primary focus of my, my training is, is strength building, uh, building up power lifting, specifically squat, bench, deadlift. Uh, so seeing how much I can improve on that. My ultimate goal is uh, 315 pound bench, 405 pound squat, and three, uh, 500 pound deadlift. I'm about, but right now my one rep max is 180, or I'm sorry, 280 bench, uh, 350 squat, and 415 deadlift. So my dead, deadlift is the furthest one away, but we're working on it. Uh, I also run a lot, so uh, if I didn't run, I'm sure I would probably make quicker gains, but I also enjoy the cardiovascular challenge uh, and maintaining that as well. Um, what is my weight? I'm right around 215 pounds, uh, I think, that's usually where I hover, between 215 and 218 is, is pretty regular for my weight, body weight. How are you, my darling? I'm good, how are you? I am good, now that I'm done with squat. Yeah. Those were not pleasant.
profile pic looks a lot like Thor. Well, thank you. I wish I was Thor. Nice. Although, no, I don't. I'm, I more resonate with uh, the Hulk. The Hulk has always been my favorite Avenger. I don't follow his story, I don't read his comics, but just something about the unbridled rage and strength that he has, I love it. What is next? What is next on our docket? Let's take a look at our workout journal. Whew. And then we'll throw our pen around. Next up, we have some overhead press. So our, the main focus of our, the kind of how our workouts are built, we do two or three exercises for a warm up that get the body going, get the muscles firing, get the blood flowing through all of our, our muscles, our joints, our tendons. Then we dive into our two main compound movements. Today was bench press, was our heavy lift. Squats were a secondary, uh, again, today, I did squats on Wednesday, that was the heavy day. Today was more of a foundational technique day, make sure everything felt good. Now we're getting into the back half, all of our accessory work. We're gonna do our overhead press, we're gonna do lat pull downs, face pulls, triceps, and some core work. Today is all of our accessories for everything that they're gonna help maintain and continue to build our strength in our primary movements, our squat bench, and our deadlift. And while we are doing that, my lovely wife Jess is going to be doing her bench press. She's doing a very similar workout to what I did. So we can do this. And now you can see both of us. The power of technology. All right, what are we doing here? Right, let's get some weights on this bar. Do you do 225 bench? Yes. So, are you talking about the TikTok? Yes. I was going to say you should tell them about the TikTok. So, back in uh, 2020, uh, I used to make TikToks, and there was a trend with some, some sound effect that you would like run in slow motion to something. Uh, and so, we we did a TikTok in the empty gym, and the premise of it was when the only when the only bench opens up. You know, it's the only bench press in a crowded gym that opens up, and so the slow motion running was me popping up and running to the bench press. So what we did was we put 225 pounds on the bar, and all Jess did to start off the video was let go of the bar, which was already racked, let go of the bar and sit up and stretch and pretend to get up pretending like she had just benched 225. And then it cuts to me and I'm slow motion running to it. All the comments. So many uh, comments. There were so like, many comments no way from, she from 225. bro dudes. That were like, there's no way she benched 225. No way, no way and at all. it's like, that's and, the joke, and, JPEG. <laughs> and they did not understand that that was the joke. But like, to be and fair, so some good. people got that and it was funny, but most people did not. It was so, wild. You know, our humors, were they just a little too highbrow for you know, plebs. Highbrow comedy. That can't possibly be true. <laughs> no, that's definitely not. Uh, that being said, she is hella strong and working her way towards 225. All right, let's do some overhead pressing. Oh.
inviting streamers who have like, you know, like average of like 2,000 concurrent viewers. Yeah. And then I'll look at their profile and it'll be like, what's up guys, I'm a 19 year old Fortnite pro. And I'm like, how, like, how did you have the time to do any of this? You know, like, you've barely been on this earth. <laughs> and like, Because they're 19 and they didn't have any other responsibility in life. Well, I mean, that also, but... We're both crazy. It's true. That may be true, but I do not think that applies to this. That is true for That's other reasons. True. Listen, we just like having fun, picking heavy things up, putting them down. How much does a home gym like that cost? So, uh, you can piecemeal it together. Uh, we, so, like, it's not cheap, I'll tell you that much. Um, but, you know, this is, this is my training space. This is where I bring clients, I have clients in person that come in. And so we needed a little bit a little bit better, better setup. Um, do you remember how much your little squat rack barbell setup cost? So, yeah, they were separate, but the squat rack was probably the crappy little one. Um, it was probably like 80 bucks. It wasn't too bad because yeah. it was a crappy little thing. The barbell, I feel like. I think that was, was like two, two fifty. 50 because I think I've seen it. They're usually around 200. Maybe. I was, cause I was about to say, I think it was around 120, Might but because I happened, I got lucky because I, I was like one of the first people to brag, but I actually was like one of the first people to be like, I'm going home in gym. It was July, 2020. And like, it was like, I mean, prices had risen because other, I, other people were like doing it, but like hadn't really caught on yet. So yeah. prices skyrocketed up, right? And then all of the weight set, all the, all the weights, that was probably, that was probably the most expensive part. Yeah, that was probably 250. Yeah. Could that be right? Probably. So I spent about a thousand on everything total. And that was rack, bar, weights, bench. And floor mats. Uh yeah. Okay. Floor mats was like the cheapest part. So piecing all that together. So our our this this rack here, this is a rogue power rack. Um, this is probably the most expensive part. It came with a pull-up bar, came with the flat bench, uh, didn't come with the barbells or weights or anything, just the, the rack itself was about a $1,000. Um, obviously, we, I found this one of these bars and this, this weight set we found on Facebook Marketplace was about, I wanna say 350 to 400. Um, Jess, uh, during the pandemic, she pieced together a home gym and it was literally, um, Rather than like a full rack here, it was it's two individual posts that are adjustable up and down, uh, two that have built-in little pegs to hold the bar. Um, it's a little bit rickety, but it worked out perfectly. So she got that plus this bar and a weight set uh, and like rubber flooring and an adjustable bench. So pretty much all you would need uh, for about a thousand dollars, probably a little bit under that. Um, the most expensive part usually is the barbell and the weights. Uh, you can usually find stuff on like Facebook Marketplace, you can find it on eBay, Craigslist. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of other like auction websites you can find as well, um, just to kind of piece it together. You don't need a whole, whole setup, but we did for what we do. You know, obviously we train clients in here, we needed at least a baseline of everything. Uh, as far as dumbbells, you've probably seen, we use the adjustable dumbbells. We don't have a dumbbell rack. Uh, we do, but it's only like five to 25 pounds. We have the adjustable dumbbells that go from five to 50. And those were about $350, I think, for the set. Uh, but again, that gets you a full dumbbell rack, five, seven and a half, 10, 12 and a half, 15, up to 50 pounds. Uh, whereas like a full rack of dumbbells with individual weights was probably $1,200 to $1,500. <sighs> Thank you for coming to that TED Talk. And, and again, that's, that's been over the course of the last like three years. Uh, started uh, on our own, in our own gym in October of 2020. So we've kind of pieced it together, brought in some more equipment, got our boxes for box jumps, a couple of the specialty bars, and stuff like that over the last couple of years. 
Uh, but it's not, it's not necessarily a cheap investment, but it is, you can find stuff that's affordable. Like I said, if you are looking for barbell stuff, if you get a bench that's adjustable, so you can get flat or incline, a barbell, you can usually find a set of weights. I think this was a 350 pound set of weights. Usually you get a pair of 45s, 35s, 25s, 10s, fives, two and a halfs. Um, and, and the individual rack stand. The individual rack stands are a lot more affordable. I hope that helps. Do I consume creatine? Yes, I do take creatine. Of the supplements that are out there, uh, which is nearly infinite, uh, creatine is one of the few that I take. I don't take a whole lot of supplements. I do pre-workout because I use that as my caffeine source because um, I'm not a big coffee drinker, uh, but I do like to have that little bit of stimulant. Uh, I take creatine for the muscle building and you know maintaining lean mass. It's not a steroid, it's not gonna pump you up, it's gonna help avoid the breakdown of your, your muscles to help make sure you stay strong. And every now and then I take protein. Like if I don't get enough protein in my food or I wanna add a little bit of an extra boost of protein after a meal, uh, like if I'm gonna lift weights and then I'm training clients for a couple hours and I'm not gonna get my meal until three or four hours later, then I'll take a protein shake. Um, yeah, those are pretty much the three, and multivitamins. I take a multivitamin, magnesium, and vitamin D every day. Uh, those are kind of the, the four staples of my supplement. Did you talk about your performance? No. I also take beef organs. <laughs> I didn't mean to, I'm just saying, like, if you're no. talking about something. No, I, I also take, like, you this. You also take beef organs. I take beef organs. I uh, take a beef organ Sorry supplement. Sorry if you didn't want to talk about that. I didn't realize that that was private. It's okay, I just forgot that one. <laughs> Uh, creatine is not a steroid. For the longest time, it was thought that it was. It is not, though. It is just, our body naturally creates it. Or creates creatinine. Our body doesn't create creatine, it creates creatinine. Creatinine is, yes, like is a what? byproduct of when your kidneys are filtering waste. Creatinine is like one of the waste byproducts. Yes. So if your blood is found to have a lot of creatinine in it, that could indicate an issue with your kidney function, or it could indicate that you ingest creatine. So two things cause creatinine to show up in your bloodstream, basically. Gotcha. You know, so. But to answer your question, no, creatine is not a steroid. It is a, it is one of the few supplements. The reason why caffeine, protein, and creatine are the three main supplements that I take regularly it's because they're the ones that have been the study the most and they're the ones that have the most um, research behind them proving that they actually work. You know, BCAAs that you might find, that's just, branched chain amino acids are essentially a form of protein. Your body naturally creates them, you don't need to take them. Uh, beta alanine, theanine, uh, fat, you know, fat burners, stuff like that. All that stuff you don't necessarily need and it's not necessarily going to work. Creatine is gonna help you maintain muscle mass. As, you, as we get older, I don't know how old you are, but as we get older, our body naturally deteriorates and it's harder for us to maintain muscle mass, lean muscle mass. And so creatine helps us maintain and build. Not as much as a steroid does, but it does help maintain muscle mass and recovery uh, to continue to build. Get that toned look, get that nice, strong, muscular look. It's good for men and women. The big suggestion is if you do take creatine, uh, as my wife mentioned, as we just mentioned, um, you know, it can show up if, if you get blood work done. Um, it can throw off the readings of how your kidneys are working and it could, you know, so best suggestion is if you're going to the doctor to get blood work done, cycle off of creatine, just stop taking it for about a week leading into the doctor's appointment. So that way that doesn't throw off any of the readings of the blood work to make sure that everything is functioning properly inside. So yeah, just, yeah. So creatine is not bad for your kidneys. It's just that it could kind of mask the other symptoms of your kidneys not functioning properly. That's just a weird bit of, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I mean,
Adios, Map. Have a good one. Have a great weekend. Bye. Congratulations on the pull-ups again. Have a good, have a great time. Have a good vacation. <laughs> oh, great questions, by the way. Be Madeline. After about 20 minutes of cardio, sometimes I feel a little dizzy. Is that normal? No, that is not normal. Uh, lots of different factors could play on a treadmill, uh, regardless of what you're doing. If you're exercising for 20 minutes and start to feel dizzy, it is not necessarily a positive thing. There are, but there are a bunch of different factors that could play into it. I don't, you know, obviously I don't know you. This is our first interaction together. Uh, that I can recall. And, uh, you know, it could be, you know, maybe you're overexerting your body and, um, you know, because you're not used to it. It could be if you're not eating enough beforehand. It could be, you know, there's, it could be if you haven't slept enough. There's a lot of different factors that can play into it. Um, so I don't really know, I don't really have a way to make that go away without knowing more about what you do. Uh, but that would be more for conversations directly one-on-one -on -one rather than in chat here. Uh, so if you're interested in talking more about that, feel free to shoot me a whisper and we can set up a time to talk outside of here. But that is not normal. So those are things to consider. Uh, are you pushing too hard for what your body can take? Are you not eating enough before you go into a workout? Like, are you doing it fasted? Um, are you not sleeping enough? Are you not drinking enough water? All those different things can kind of play into it. It just depends on kind of what you're doing. But end of the day, you should not feel dizzy after being on a treadmill for 20 minutes. You shouldn't you feel dizzy after any exercise for any amount of minutes? Feeling dizzy is a bad thing. Usually that's an indication that your blood and oxygen is out of your brain and everywhere else. Too many factors to resolve it, you just gotta figure out which one it is. A lot of times my clients that come work with me in person, uh, especially if they are in the mornings, they uh, their first session, back when I, first, when I started as a trainer, before I learned uh, that many of them were not eating before they came in, uh, they would come into like, you know, a 6, 7, 8 a.m. session and they'd get dizzy and nauseated about halfway through their workout and I'm like, what's going on? They're like, oh yeah, I didn't eat anything. My last meal was last night and I just woke up and came right in. Yeah, you haven't eaten anything, so you don't have any energy. So, I mean, that could be a factor, but so. I'm just gonna play around and figure out which one it is. Don't just, don't just stop and give up and say you can't do it. You know. Are you gonna go, to, gonna go to the hospital later? You are going to the hospital later, or you will have to go to the hospital later if you don't resolve it. We hope you don't have to go to the hospital. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe you don't. See, that's, you know, I, I very much appreciate you saying something, saying, you know, asking about this. The problem is, I, you know, we don't know anything about you. Uh, again, this would be a conversation for us to have off, off chat, offline, just you and me, to learn a little bit more about you, because I don't know anything about you your history, your background, your exercise experience, your goals, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to have that conversation, we absolutely can. Uh, feel free to shoot me a whisper or just a message outside of here and we can set something up. Uh, but it's not cause to quit. 
It's just there are a bunch of different factors that could be playing into why you're getting dizzy. It's just a matter of weeding them out and figuring out which one it is. Anyway, I love both your vibes of workouts. Thank you. We like our vibes of workouts. Fitness is for everyone, no matter what it looks like, no matter what your goals are. What we're doing might not be best for you, what you're doing might not be best for us, but that doesn't mean that we're not all on the same journey together to be happier, healthier, stronger, better versions of ourselves. And that's what we're here to do. Find fun and but uh, find joy in the journey and have a good time. My throat is fine. My voice is just gone because I have to breathe through my mouth. Yeah, so I can, I can, I can hear just a little bit. It's not bad. I can tell. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. It's just okay. gone. All the, all the breathing through my mouth and then projecting to get to the yeah. floor to make sure they can hear. Make sure you're getting some water. Hey. Oh, I've peed enough. I'm drinking plenty of water. Away doesn't mean we're finished with these. We just gotta bump it up a little bit. Any of you guys remember Emeril Lagasse, the, the chef? Bam! Bam! Let's kick it up a notch! Bam! And then they would always not make fun of him, but there was a future <coughs> character that was. Yeah, uh, what was his name? I, I don't remember. Because Bender would always. Uh, and he had, and he had, they have a, a spice weasel. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of him. <laughs> Stop. I hate it. Then don't make the joke. No, I, I know. I don't need it. What's up, Battle Mario? <laughs> had that sitcom for 37 seconds. That is a very, very, like, precise number. <laughs> Nobody's slacking over here. Come on now. We don't slack off around here. We goof off, but we don't slack off. Precision is key to comedy. That's very true. Like, you know, what's the difference between. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Um, what's the difference between tragedy and comedy? Time. What's the difference between a good joke and a bad joke? Timing. Oh. That makes sense. <laughs> it's something like that. I like that. <laughs> All right, we got two more rounds on our overhead press. Let's see how these go. I bet they go well. Or they won't. Those are the options. Ooh. 
Spoiler, they went well. What's up, Derek? I am six foot two. Six foot two, about 215 pounds. A pure awesome. That's not true. It's mostly pizza. <laughs> I don't like that I had to do that little bit of a push, but sometimes we need to. 5'8", 132, nice. Those are good numbers. to bulk up, put on size. I saw someone in better shape than me when I was out running. And I have to hit the weights harder. That's a great attitude to have. It's a solid attitude. Interestingly enough, it's exactly what we're hoping to do here. 
That's why we're here, to help inspire. Is it working? Is it working? <laughs> Hi. All right, we are going to, we finished up with our overhead press. Next, we're gonna do some pull downs. We did a press up, so now we gotta pull down all of our celebration muscles. Let me know if you need any help. Yes. I'm going to spot my lovely wife on her last set. There's spot. If you're ever spotting somebody on a workout, if they need your help, make sure you go with an over and under a split grip on the bar. That is going to be the most stable. If you are the one spotting, always go off of their marks. If, you, if they need a lift off, if they need a lift off, you go off of their count. If they need help, you go when they call for help. Once again, I figured I'd be fine, but I do feel a lot better after that kind of Yeah, no problem. And if you are the one needing a spotter, then the same rules, the same rules apply. If you are the one that needs a spotter, make sure that you dictate to the person that is spotting to you how you want them to help you. You want a lift off. A lift off is where you're getting assistance from the bar being racked into the starting position for you to do your bench press. If you want them to help you with that, it is on your count. Either one, two, three, go, or three, two, one, go, because they're gonna help assist into position. You wanna make sure you're both on the same page with that. So they don't go to lift, and you lift, and it's, you know, it throws everything off. And then again, if you need help, Make sure they know what your safe word is, whether it's help or go or oh dear God, I'm dying or pineapple or banana hammock or whatever your safe word is uh, to, help, to help get that weight off of. And again, always ask them to do a split grip, one hand under, one hand over, because that's gonna be the most stable grip for them to help lift that bar off. A lot of times you'll see if they go double under or double over, there's the potential that the bar could move. That just keeps it in place, lift up and re-rack. There you go. Next up, we've got our lat pull downs here. It's one of my favorite exercises for our back. You should do it at least once a week, if not more. A strong back is a healthy back, it leads to a strong body. We got four sets of 20 here, so we're going to dive on into our first set. to do the, no, the stitches or whatever, but I fucked up! It's okay. He's totally it's made. okay. I can still draw a football. Maybe. We'll find out. Maybe. I'll have to look at a picture for reference. But I bet I can do it. Like an oval and then some stitches. Yeah. Okay. They're gonna end up looking like creepy clown mouths, but hey. That's fine. They'll taste really good. Jess made some delicious red velvet chocolate chip. Chocolate chip red velvet co uh, cookies. Red velvet cookies. Red velvet cookies with chocolate chips. Uh, yesterday, she's going to a Super Bowl party on Sunday, and uh, going to be icing them with a buttercream frosting. <sighs> so good. Uh, so she's going to make little little footballs. What's up, Tokyo? 
what we're working on today. We did some bench press. Did six sets of three with uh, 235. And then we hit some squats. We did five by five uh, with 245. Uh, just a nice little foundational work because Wednesday was our heavy squat day. So today was more of a technique day. Just finished up with some overhead press. We did uh, five sets. We did eight, seven, six, five, five on our reps, increasing the weight by 10 pounds each time. Now we're diving into our lat pull downs. We, uh, we are about to go into our second of four sets. Having a good workout. How are you doing today? What did you do? Or what are you about to do? Or is today a rest day? Or none of the above. <laughs> All right, round two. Round two. Fight. Fight. That's the good stuff. Day squats for you. Woo. Friday squats. It's a bold strategy. Is that so? Is that because you don't have to? Uh, won't have to walk the rest of the weekend? An excuse to lay up on the couch. Hold on, machine. How do you like it? to traditional machines. So I, I love it. So this is actually one, um, my business partner, Bobby, uh, the other coach I share a space with, when we moved in here, or when we started working together, uh, training out of our own space in fall of 2020, this was one of the first machines he, he bought. Uh, we're in Columbus, Ohio, uh, right down the street from Ohio State University, uh, which is where he went to school. And they had a machine like this uh, when he would go there. And he told me, he's like, the best lap pull down machine you've ever used. I, we gotta find one. We drove all the way down to Cincinnati. It's about a two hour drive. Picked it up in a U-Haul and brought it up here. It's a pain in the ass, um, but it's great. Um, you know, traditional lap pull down is either on the cable machines, like one of these guys. Whoa, 20% battery life. Now it's the race against the clock. Uh, it's regular lap pull downs are kind of on a cable machine like this. You've got the long bar, the crooked bar that you pull down. Uh, or a machine is the two arms that simultaneously just come down to the sides. I, those are fine. I like ours a little bit better because with the, on the cable, when you pull down, you have to kind of like lean back so you don't bop yourself in the head with the cable and it almost turns into like an angled row. And then with the machine with the fixed arms, you're coming out really wide, like, cause they're, they're not really, they don't really allow for independent movement. What's nice about our machine here, come around to this side so you can kind of see. What's kind of cool about our machine here is that both of these arms, they come down together, but they move independently side to side so that as you're pulling down, it's gonna be weird coming from the other side. This is gonna be a backwards way. But as they come down, you, you're able to move and then your hand position is able to go to what fits you. So it's a little bit more customizable in that regard. And unlike the normal cable with a long bar, you're able to keep your back a lot more upright so your arms get a really good nice tuck, elbow tuck into your ribs, which really engages those lats. So TLDR, I enjoy it compared to other lat pull down machines.
But this thing was a hoss. The weight stack on here, the weight stack on here, each plate is 20 pounds. It goes from 10 to 290. So about 300 pounds of resistance. Thankfully these came off, but the machine itself was in one piece on a guy's back patio. And this machine itself weighs probably 300 pounds. So we had to put it up on a dolly and just like farmers carry it around this guy's yard up into a U-Haul. Pain in the ass. But it's been worth it. We've gotten, we've gotten our money's worth out of it. Because yeah, like, like I said, with a normal lap pull down, you would normally have to lean back and it almost turns into like just a row. Whereas here, I'm able to keep my upper body nice and upright. It really gets great engagement of the lats. And it's also nice because with the arms coming apart independently, it's almost kind of like dumbbells where you can feel if one side is in balance where left arm pulls a little bit more than the right arm. So you can kind of make those adjustments. So I enjoy it. I'm glad we have it. It's one of our unique pieces of equipment that kind of we like to have fun with. right now and I have a hard time contracting them. A neutral grip I get a better contraction overall. Interesting. Yeah as you can see we've got the handle so you can do a neutral grip pull down. Um, it's interesting. Uh, what do you feel has been the biggest what's up Oreo? Uh, what do you feel Tokyo has been the biggest reason for not being able to feel the contraction in a normal lap pull down. Do you feel like you're using your biceps too much or you're just not feeling it? Ario, I saw you were doing your workout earlier. How did it, how'd it go? On your rear delts and traps somehow. Hmm. That is interesting. I've never heard anybody say that. Not to say that I don't believe you, it's just, Have you tried like, do you ever just go lighter on, on the weight uh, just to really kind of focus on that pull down? Or do you feel like it could be, could be, are you doing a little bit too much lean back? So like I said, cause as soon as, as you know, with, with our lat pull down here, with this one, cause we're able to get straight down into our sides, tucking our elbows into our ribs it is pretty much a straight up and down, almost like a pull up. Whereas if you're using like a cable or another machine, if you, as soon as you start to lean back, when those elbows don't come into your ribs, as soon as they start to angle backwards, you're gonna feel it a little bit more in those traps and those rear delts. And all the way to my back to this and get a slow control contraction. I think it's been helping. But yeah, that makes sense. That was gonna be my, my kind of guidance would be just lighten, lighten the weight a little bit, slow it down to build up that connection and where you're feeling it. Um, and if you're feeling it better in a neutral grip, then go for it. it you know, there's, there's no right or wrong answer for, for those exercises. You know, if you feel it better in a neutral, neutral grip versus the prone normal grip, then go for it. The nice thing about all this stuff, every exercise in here boils down to the basic movements. You know, as long as you are doing a vertical pull, regardless of where your arms are, you're, you're working in the right direction. So if you feel it better with one variation over another, Go for it. So we're all built, you know, we all have the same muscle and bone structure, but we all feel slightly different things in different areas because we are all slightly different in individual. So if that works for you, then go for it. Aria, why did it go horribly? Hopefully it's just because it was hard and not because of any other reason.
It was rough, that's all. <laughs> it gets a little bit easier. But then as soon as it gets easier, and then you're finished with the first phase and phase two hits you in the gut again. <clears throat> but from what I've seen, you've taken names to kick butt this week. We like what we see. And hopefully they've been relatively enjoyable regardless of how hard they are. <laughs> So if anybody has any questions about week one of my online coaching program, you can direct them to Ario in the, uh, in the chat. He's just finishing up week one. He's taking names and kick butts. And I'm sure he would have nothing but nice things to say about how, about his experience in working with me. Or at least, at least he would in my chat of my stream. He might have other things, negative things to say outside of here. Cursing me for the workouts and the exercises. Fine. I only got uh, I got three more exercises left to finish up today. Nah, it's fine. It's supposed to be. It is supposed to be rough the first week. See, that's what people always forget is you know a lot of times people will make their uh, keep it up. First few weeks are always rough. Yeah, I think a lot of people with like the new year, new me resolutionists, like I'm gonna get fit, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna jump on this train, I'm gonna do all these things. Yeah, like it's great and we want you to do that, we want you to succeed, but then they start and they get to the gym and they haven't done it in years or ever and they don't realize that it can be tough and it's tiring and it's exhausting and you are using your body in a different way and you are eating differently than you have before. There is an adjustment period. And so I think when people hit that wall, that's when they go, fuck this, I'm not gonna do this, it's terrible. Why would I do this to myself? It hurts all the time. But the people that push through, that break through that barrier, get through week one, get through week two, they build that steam, their, their body's just adapting. That, that time when your body's screaming at you, what are you doing? It's realizing that you're doing something different. And as soon as it clicks and goes, oh, this isn't so bad. You know, week two, week three. That's when you start to see the transition. That's when you start to see that habit building. But so many people, as soon as they hit that wall, just go, fuck it, and quit. But not us, we keep going. All right, we got some triceps to work on. Triceps and face pulls. Triceratops and face pulls. Five days a week for almost two years now. Woo! Heck yeah. What's up, Kristoff? Welcome in. Yeah, Tokyo, Tokyo Tea, yeah. I, my, my typical program is about three days a week in the gym. Um, through the fall and winter, I was doing five to six days, but I was also trying to run all, as well, and that just got to be too much. Three days a week lifting, maybe a fourth day if I'm feeling crazy, uh, and then three days of running seems to be the sweet spot for me for blowing the roof off my, my program. It gives me enough rest time as well as enough work time. And that's kind of why I double up my compound movements, why I do you know, deadlift, bench, squat, deadlift, you know, uh, squat, uh, bench, squat. So doubling up my, my compound movements twice a week really helps me expand on those goals. Take longer breaks in between, but yeah, I want to learn the right form. Yeah, that's fine right now. Take those longer breaks. Take those longer breaks as you need to. Diet as you get better, as your body acclimates, we'll take shorter breaks in that 45 to 60 second period. What's up, Christoph? How you doing today? All right, getting into our triceratops. 
from four sets of 15 on our tricep pushdowns. This is just an accessory exercise. I don't go too crazy heavy. We already burned a lot of our energy in our earlier lifts with our overhead press, our bench press, and our squat. Going nice and smooth, getting a full range of motion, nice contraction at the bottom, stretch at the top. That's where we want to be. That's going to help us in the long run. This is building up stability and strength in our accessory muscles that help with our overhead press and our bench press. I lost count because I was talking, but we're going to do four more. It's less about counting and more about making the reps count, or something like that. Pretty overkill. Deadlift, chest, back squat, arms. I wouldn't say that's overkill. I'd say that's a perfect kind of breakup of, the, of each exercise. When I was doing six days a week, it was kind of a push-pull legs, push-pull legs, where like the first three days would be more volume, so less weight, higher reps. And then the back half, the back three days would be higher weight, lower reps. So it was kind of a back and forth. And it was a lot. <laughs> Uh, and, and I just got a little bit burnt out on that and I had to go back to the three days a week. And like I said, it's been working out perfectly. We do a nice little warm up, hit our two main compound movements and then have four or five little accessories like our lat pull downs, our triceps, face pulls, you know, stuff like that that's gonna help build those. <coughs> that gives you more to improve on. Little back muscles. But we're gonna build them nice and strong. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of back day and leg day. Those are my two favorites. A strong back and strong glutes lead to a strong, healthy body. You know, that's one of the things we've talked about with posture. Uh, a lot of times, you know, people that have back problems in their lower back or their upper back from posture problems, they always think like, oh, I just gotta stretch my back out. It's already been stretched. All that leaning forward, all that terrible posture is everything stretched out. So by strengthening our back, it stretches our chest, stretches our hips, and pulls us into a better postural position, and gives us that nice, strong body. One of my clients, she came to me, and she was, that was her big complaint, was her upper and lower back were just sore all the time. She worked at a desk all day and was a gamer, so she'd sit at her desk and play games for four or five hours every night. She had terrible posture. Uh, and so one of the things she had mentioned is she's like, I've seen a chiropractor twice a week for the past three months and my back is, it's fine for a couple of days and then it hurts again. So our big focus was strengthening her back. She, was, she saw me two days a week and both days we emphasized strengthening her back. And within three weeks, six sessions, three weeks, She's like, my back pain is gone, it's been eliminated, and she hasn't gone back to the chiropractor since, and she was one of my first clients back in 2019. So, strengthening your back can, can help mitigate and eliminate a lot of problems. Leg day was money, Monday. They've been sore until Thursday. That gets easier. Again, that's why I put leg day first in our program, just to hit it right out of the gate. Next week, you know, hopefully by Wednesday you'll feel better. And the week after by Tuesday you'll feel better. I hit you hard out of the gate, man. This is, we don't mess around, we got goals to hit. Yeah, Tokyo, that routine, that uh, five day a week routine, uh, what would you say it was? Deadlift, chest, back, squat, arms. Yeah, that's a pretty solid plan. <clears throat> you 
if that works for you, the thing I always tell people is you, you got to make sure that it fits to your, your, your schedule and your lifestyle. If you have the time and you enjoy lifting five days a week, a plan like that is perfect. When I was doing five to six days a week, I loved being in the gym. I loved breaking it up very similarly and I had the time and I could do that. Now I'm at a point where my I need a couple of extra recovery days in between, so I, I only do three days a week. And again, we're getting back into running season. You know, I, I enjoy being able to run three, four, five, six miles regularly without too terrible of a, of a time. Um, and so I gotta make sure that I've got time for that because you know that takes 30 to 60 minutes out of a day. And so it's hard to find time to be able to do both of those things. And with the fact that I'm now streaming a little bit more frequently, at least at least one or two of my workouts a week, um, you know, these streams take at least at least two hours to get through. Uh, so if I were to try to double up and make you know extra workouts and stuff, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But again, if five works for you, go for it. Go right after work, works great for me, perfect. Hamstrings and claws, you get the most out of my leg movements. That's awesome. That's that's a great way to do it. I've definitely, definitely done that approach as well. Yeah, I've done the bodybuilding style workouts like that, where you break it up. I've done, you know, uh, tried CrossFit workouts a couple times before, which were terrible. Um, the bodybuilding and the powerlifting style are usually what I kind of gravitate towards. So right now we're in kind of a powerlifting mode. It's a powerlifting program. Powerlifting being squats, bench, and deadlift is our primary movements. Uh, and each week we're building up and increasing the weight uh, towards improving our one rep maxes. Uh, we're in week seven of this current, uh, current 12 week block. So I think next week is a deload, which is gonna be nice to give the body a little bit of a break. Twenty-five deadlift and two fifty bench last week. Hell yeah! This bump. Don't max out squat though. Do knee injuries. That makes sense. I'm trying to be that emoji for that emote. You got me beat on the deadlift. My max deadlift is four fifteen. We were doing 235 for, for reps of three on our bench press earlier today. <clears throat> My one rep max on bench press is 275. Failed 280. Pretty terribly. <laughs> but the goal is 315. You know, I don't, I don't need to be one of those guys that benches 500, squats six, seven, eight hundred pounds. Like, my goal is 315 bench, 405 squat, 500 deadlift. If I hit those numbers, I will be happy. That is strong. <laughs> That's as strong as I will need to be. If I can get close to those numbers safely at some point in my life and maintain able to run three to six miles relatively regularly, then I'm gonna be grooving and I'm gonna be happy. 500 deadlift, fuck yeah, let's do it together. Race to 500. One more round on our triceratops. Oh yeah, no, you 100% beat me to it. I have been stuck at 415 as my max for the last year. But again, I have been 
lifting and running. Uh, in, the, in the summer and fall last year, my main focus was running. Because uh, we did, we were doing half marathons. I think there were two or three half marathons we did in the fall. And I had a goal of getting under, under a two hour half, which I hit. So I don't need to do that anymore. So now my focus is back on deadlifting. I did, uh, I think I did three, 355 for sets of two on Tuesday. Uh, and that was supposed to be about 85% of my max. So you will still probably beat me there. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna give you, give you my all to try to beat you. No, it's okay, I'm rooting for him too. All right, next up we got some face pulls. Uh, this is one of my favorite exercises for posture, for building upper back strength, for working your rear delts. It's one of my go-tos. I do it at least once a week, if not more. It's a great, great exercise for upper back health and strength. Face pulls were great for fixing the posture. Yeah, that is one of face pulls, pull, band pull aparts, rear delt flies. They are two of my go-tos for upper, upper back, rear delts, posture. Anytime anybody says they have problems with their upper back, immediately start doing face pulls. And 99% of that problem goes away. Oh goodness, what a good workout. Had some great bench press. Did some okay squats. Legs and back were feeling tired from holding or from, from squatting. Some great overhead press, getting some face pulls in now to finish up. It's been a great day. Hopefully you guys have had a wonderful day as well. If you worked out earlier, hope it was a good one. If you're currently working out, hope you're having a great workout. If you're working out later, awesome. If it's a rest day, well, hopefully your next workout is awesome too. Oh, 
know, something about, something about a Friday workout is just great. Gets you ready for the weekend, makes you feel good. Pun intended, helps you exorcise the demons of the work week. Just kind of gets you in the frame of mind transitioning out of work into the weekend. Nothing like it. One more round of our face pulls. Ooh. Oh, that's the good stuff. Well, I think that is where we're going to finish things up. Uh, last things I have left to do in my workout here are planks, which I don't know about you, but I feel like are not gonna be fun to watch. Me just plank. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and finish the stream up now. Uh, I wanna thank you guys for swinging by. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you so much. My name is Eric. Hopefully you hit that follow, uh, or you can find me over on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Always Hungry PT to follow along. I like to like to uh, stream at least twice a week, usually either Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. So you can follow along over on Twitter or Instagram, or join the Discord as well, uh, right there. Join the Discord uh, to see when I announce going live. Thank you guys so much. Hopefully you have a wonderful weekend, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.